Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse the Planets. I know you're enjoying our YouTube videos. That's why you don't want to miss anything. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you will know when we post new content. That's like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Do it now, so watch this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse DePlantis here, and it's my wonderful wife, Catherine. And we're here for another chat. <laughs> yes. This is part two of our- Part two. Part two. And uh, we have not had this close on for a week. <laughs> what we did, we taped uh, what you saw last week, and it was so good, we didn't want to break the flow of it. And last week, we started out with part one, and the, and the title of it is, Love is the Antidote for Fear. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to, we want to deal with part two. Before we get into it, do you have fear in your life? If you do, I have an answer for you in Saint, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Hmm. And, I, and I started off with the program last week that I've been all over the world, and I've noticed in abundance fear and in abundance love. But yet the two sh cannot, they, they it's like matter and antimatter. They, love will destroy it. See, but it has to be cast out. We want to get into it. And Kathy began to read some of the wonderful uh, different translations on the, I guess, the gifts of the Spirit where you were talking about what Well, there. about love. Well, the about gifts love of the Spirit and what is it means. in the previous chapter of chapter 12, but it says, and all these things are great, but if you don't have love, none of that matters. Yeah, and I said this last week, and I want to say this again. Because when I wasn't born again, all, everything in me was dead. Hmm. So I didn't want to go to church. I didn't really even talk much about God and whatever, this and the thing. So I, I, and I never saw sin. I want to start that, this part too with that. I never did till I got born again. Uh, the night before I had done this rock concert in this club, it was, it was powerful, beautiful place. I got born again, and, and when I went back into this, less than 24 hours, okay? I mean, for the first time I went, God, what is this? But now I love had come in my life. Now, I told you this last week, and I, and I, and I messed up. On, I had John, but it was, I said that love, that the Bible talks about God as God is love, God is light, and God is spirit. And in St. John chapter 4, verse 24, he says God is a spirit. Right. Then, and then if you go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, I, I, and I just love it, they say God is love. Then if you go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, it, it says God is light. Light, love, spirit. And that's what we are, see? And I told you last week that love and fear coexist only if your love is not perfected. Now, God gave us these, this wonderful word mm -hmm. so we could perfect everything, you know, with faith and patience. You know, per, you know per, perfect love casts out of fear, but the Bible said let patience have its perfect work that you perfect. It uses that word perfect or matured. An entire lacking yeah. nothing, it now, says. See, this is a thing that I know happens all the time, and I want to get into this. I don't know how it happens. How can anybody backslide? Hmm. Why would you want to? I preached a sermon probably 47 years ago. What in hell do you want? What does hell have to offer that you wouldn't go back there? Then it dawned on me the reason why people backslide. They've never perfected their love. Hmm. Actually, they ignored the love of God, and it began to decay in their lives. Well, you know, it's hard for some people to believe the love because yeah. they, they don't love themselves. Right. Jesus said, I have loved you as, as much as I love the as Father. As my Father has loved me. Yeah, yeah as much as I, the Father loves me, he loves them. And he was telling right. me, it's, it's not just that we're to love one another. He brought it to another level. He says, a new commandment that I give you is that you love one another as I have loved you. So that's different than loving one another uh, like you love yourself, which is love yourself, right. your neighbors, you love yourself, which was what the Old Testament talked about and Jesus even talked about. And that's a good thing too, but not everybody loves themselves. So that really doesn't yeah. help that type of person. But he, his challenge, his new commandment yeah. was that he, you love one another as I have loved you. And Jesus loved to, to I mean, such a level well, of love. We, it's hard to comprehend, well, let me, but he I, went I gotta to the cross. I got to break in here. I got to break in here. You said something about your image. People don't love themselves because they've never seen what image they were created in. Mm. You were created in the image of God. Mm. See, the image of God. So anybody says, that I don't love myself, you don't know how you were created. You, you have never really seen your image. Mm. 
because in Genesis he said he said he created male and female, created he them, and you know he said and he and he, he created in his in his image and his likeness. Now when you begin to talk like that, that bothers church people because they, they think you're cocky or you think you're God. No, but I am a product of God. I am a son of God that serves. See, what people don't seem to understand, if you don't think God loved the perfected love, you, oh man, we'll get some, I'm gonna get some persecution on that. You are in a higher class than angels because they were created as servants. When you got born again, God created you as sons and daughters, family. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and that's one of the most amazing. My daughter does not have to have permission to come to my house at two o'clock in the morning, knock on the door and wake us all up. Why? Family. Well, God doesn't have to have permission to wake me up at two o'clock in the morning and let's talk. Mm -hmm. You see, that's perfected love doing those things. And I feel real strong right now to say to people that are watching that don't have a good image of yourself. Go read Genesis chapter one. Well, I'm going to read it for you. So you can go and you can read Genesis page one of the Bible. That'll help you. I mean, you can't only miss page, <laughs> page one. And look what it says. And it's just such a simple statement, yet it's very, very powerful. And I believe it's uh, Genesis chapter one, uh, verse, um, oh, it's in God. Let's see. Uh, yeah, verse 26, I think it is. And, yeah. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, he goes on to say something. I want to talk about that. So you've been made in the image of God and his likeness. Mm -hmm. Th that's why man has the ability to create because you came from a creator. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why he gave us power over everything on the planet. Yet animals are way stronger than us. A lion will take you out in a second. A gorilla will wipe you out, but because of your intelligence created in the image of God. See, and likeness, he made you ruler over something that's more powerful than you in terms of natural strength. Well, you have to have that love perfected. So let me go back to that statement. It's hard for me to understand why anybody, and I know it, it happens, why anybody would backslide. Why? Because you really have not seen your image hmm and what you was created to look like, because maybe the church wouldn't let you, but now don't get greedy, don't get crazy with this thing. It's not being crazy, you are what you are. You see what I'm saying? Now you can say you're like, like we have all this gender junk going on around the world, but you know, and say, well, I, I, I'm a woman trapped in a man's body, or I'm a man trapped in a woman. That's wrong. See, that's your intellect, that's, that's your soul is really messing you up. You know, I heard something about that, well, Let me finish my statement, if you died, and 10,000 years from now, they found you in the sand or something. And they did DNA, and you said, I am a woman uh, trapped in a man's body. You, <laughs> no, you, you are a woman. Your yeah, DNA do, tells you what you are. 10,000 years from now will show what you were when you were born biologically. Not what you felt. But I heard someone say one time, this man said, you know, I was a man trapped inside of a woman's body, but then I was born <laughs> as a baby. Anyway, it's, but says you as a man in your mama. I got you. Yeah. That's the joke. <laughs> That's a joke. But, it's, but it only it's, happens it's, that it's way. It's the joke. only way that a man... A <laughs> little weak, a little weak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Been a, in a woman's body right. yeah. is, is before you it, it, it's a, But it's just, a, yeah, I'm still trying to figure that one out here. Praise no, the Lord. Oh, it's, uh, it's funny. I heard Jonathan Shuttlesworth say that. Oh, it yeah. was hilarious. It was hilarious. <laughs> it made sense. He I'm says, I was, a, I was a man inside of a woman's body. He says, but then I, then I was born <laughs> as a baby. As a baby. <laughs> And when you understand that, it, you see, that's when I look at myself now, you're going to get mad. You're going to get mad when I say that. And I wish all Christians would believe what I just say. I love myself. And I'm not talking about this here. I'm talking about my spirit. I'm created in the express image of God. So you could say, uh, it's like what's flowing through me in my spirit is liquid love, for lack of a better way to say it. Like we have liquid blood flowing, which is life in the blood. See, liquid love, see. Liquid God mm. flowing inside of you because God is, is love. Yeah. Amen. So that's the reason why so many people uh, don't understand. And you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a major reason why a lot of people commit suicide. They yeah. get so depressed. They don't love themselves. No. They don't and love they figure, anybody. they say, well, you know, I, I'm not nothing. I'm not, and so I just might as well end this. And that's a terrible thing. With the church being so prevalent in the world today, 
But a lot of times the church is not preaching love. They're preaching legalism. Con condemnation. Do this. If you don't do this, you're going to hell. You know that? You know, and, and, and everybody knows what, what, most people know what they do when it's wrong. There's, there's, a, there, there's something inside you go, mm, you shouldn't God. be doing that kind of right. stuff. See right. what I'm saying? But when you preach the love of God, and you know what? You need to preach on sin because that's love. You see, I couldn't get over why God put that cherub. You know, when, when, in Adam and Eve, when they were <clears throat> expelled from the garden, he put that cherub with that flaming sword and, and it moved in all directions, but you couldn't get around it. That was an act of love. Why? Because if Adam and Eve could have got back in that garden and eat of the tree of life, they would have lived in a sinful state for eternity. Yeah. But God did that so that they would grow old and pass so that he could send Jesus to redeem them. That's good. And That's then right. raise them up. Hmm. We're going to meet Adam and Eve, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to be raised up. All, everyone that's ever died is going to be raised up. Do you understand? And judgment will come. Would it be a good judgment? Would it be a bad judgment? Oh, you know, it, what's according to what you did on this earth? What you do here determines what you'll be and what you'll do when you stand when you stand before God and God says, "Come and enter into the love of God and the great." Or depart from me, you work of iniquity. I knew you not. You see what I'm saying? So what happens is, <laughs> and I can't understand this or nothing. Well, how people say God put that sickness on to teach you something. What? That's perverted love. What? Yeah. I'm going to put some cancer cells in you to destroy your body so you'll learn. No, no. You wouldn't do that to your child, would you? Especially if you love the child. Think about that for not. a minute. Of course not. No, you wouldn't do that. So what makes you think God, who can love more than we can love, would do that? And yet the churches preach that. And you know why? <laughs> they preach God as a God of fear. Mm. You see... So perfect, the perfect love of God uh, casted out fear, but they preferred the fear to make you serve God. And God don't make you serve him. He asked. He created you with a free will. Now, I like that. Now, sometimes I tell God, I wish you wouldn't have done it. And then he gave me this statement. He said, the reason why I created everybody free, with a free will, you could walk, come in, walk toward me or walk away from me. You never really know if somebody loves you until they have the ability to walk away from you. Then you find out. You see what I'm, you understand what I'm saying? So we're talking about that, that love is the antidote to fear. I like that. And you know, we read this, I read this uh, verse last week and we mm -hmm. talked a little bit about it and it's the Passion Translation of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse seven, you really liked. I like, It's yeah. the last one, it says, love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. But that phrase, love is a safe place of shelter. Oh, there's I like a, that. There's a reference here I wanted to read because in the King James, I think it says, love bears all things. Right. And that the description here in the um, comment here, it says, although commonly understood to mean that love can bear hardships of any kind, the nom nominalized form of the verb stego, it says, is actually the word for roof. Uh, found in Mark 2 and 4, says, Paul is saying that love covers all things like a roof covers the house. And in 1 Peter chapter 4, 8, it says, love does not focus on what is wrong, but will bear with the shortcomings of others. And like a roof protects and shields you, it shields, you could say that love springs no leak. It's a safe like place. That that offers shelter, not exposure. That's the description in the, safety in the Passion Translation for this verse. It's a little reference mark. Isn't yeah. that great? Well, you know, th it's that's, a safe that's in the marriage vows, where you love her, protect her, you see. In other words, that it's like a roof. Yeah. You know, you uh, and it, it works on both sides, her and you. See, and together. you know, that just reminds me how we talk about how when we, uh, when we know God, we're basically, although we're in this world, we're not of the world, but God has what, I, what we call an umbrella yeah. of protection mm -hmm. on the body, on the person that knows him. So no matter what you're, what's going on in the world, you can have a peace oh, God, knowing yeah. that you have God's totally. promises, his protection <laughs> available to you. I got a good example of it the other day. We, at Jesse the Prince, man, we got some of the biggest umbrellas you have ever seen in your life. They it's get a, across the parking lot. Two Person and because um, usually it's someone, someone helping you now get what, to your car. And, but, and we, you need to cover rain, two people. 
We like we have forest goat fat rain. rain. We got fat rain. Sideways rain. <laughs> I mean, we got. Can I see like rain. a come up out the ground rain. <laughs> we, we, one thunderstorm can you drop can get three inches in 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 seconds. Oh, like that. I mean, we got a thunderstorm three inches, four inches, bam! You know, just that quick and flood. You'll flood. But the other day, I, man, it was raining. We call it cats and dogs. I've never seen cats and dogs come out of the sky. But make a joke. I, I grabbed this this umbrella, and it's so big. It's a bit bigger than this table. I mean, but, <laughs> now it's wet. I mean, raining. And I, and I got the umbrella, and I'm holding it, and not a drop of water's hitting me. I mean, everywhere, mm -hmm. and not a drop of water hitting me. That's the love of God. Mm -hmm. Through hard times, stay under the umbrella. That's good. It's a big umbrella. I love it. Now, that. water going everywhere. You see? I mean, raining. Watch that. And then the rain began to change direction. You know what I did with the umbrella? I turned it so the wind wouldn't blow it on me. Mm -hmm. Do you see what that's I'm saying? That's a sideways rain coming in. <laughs> Staying in rain. <laughs> yeah, I love Forrest Gump. I thought that was great. You see what I'm saying? Another I think, movie I Tom Hanks, man. I, I think he's a great actor. <laughs> so when you understand that, that umbrella, that safety harbor, in other words, you can walk through life when it's raining. Mm hmm because God gave you something that loves you so much, and that's you'll it. not get wet. And also he talks about in the Bible about the shield of faith. The shield of faith. You know, and it's, it's now, all You know what's wrong with people on the shield of faith? They carry the darts on the shield. Chick, yeah. Yeah, which is kind of heavy. That faith stuff's kind of hard. Yeah, because you're carrying the fiery darts. Knock the darts off and just keep the shield of faith. Yeah, don't look at those darts. Right. Get you know what I'm saying? Them. It just works that Trust way. Trust God. So, Perfect love cast it out all fear. I want to go back to our original verse of 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There's no fear in love, but perfect love cast it out fear because fear hath torment. That fear, that fear is not made perfect in him. And then verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe, and I mean this sincerely, that we should all put God first spiritually, physically, and financially. Now, I'm going to say something here, and it's going to probably make some people mad. I, if anybody likes sports, I like sports. I like, I do. I love football. I like baseball. I don't know much about soccer. You know, so I, so, but, you know, once you understand something, you can fall in love with it. Like, I, I'm a musician. I've played a lot of music, but I, I don't really understand opera that much. But I know it takes great talent to sing and hit those notes and things. But I, I, my, my point is, is this, when you understand what I'm about ready to say. Okay, now watch this. You know, I, uh, I love sports. But I don't put it ahead of God. I want to see a game so bad sometimes. And, uh, but I have to do something the Lord wants me to do. I'm not, I'm, not, not, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm not being critical. But I will not miss church to watch a game. Mm. Are you saying it's a sin? No, I didn't say that. I mean, I let you handle that between you and God. I'm not here to judge you. But to me, I'm talking about first. Seek ye first. So you can't get second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever, till you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I, seek ye first. Right. But, you know, but I know a lot of people that do that. Well, I think... Uh, and they've grown accustomed to it like it's nothing. Right. I think it's a lot of it is stemmed from the fact that sometimes we use the word love too loosely. You know, you just, instead of saying I love sports, what some people really do love yeah. sports. Yeah, there's I, not a thing I, wrong with that. They can say I enjoy sports. So let's use the right word. Lo use the word lo I love Jesse. I love you, Jesse. Yeah, that? That's great. <laughs> I love you too, Mom. I said it first. I said I did it on purpose. I did. did you? I, I did. I like, think I caught you. No, you didn't catch the me. The whole world saw it. <laughs> the whole world saw it. <laughs> no. See what I put up with? <laughs> no, you see, she just did But that. love bears all things. Here we go with the banter I'm a again. I'm shelter. That's okay. I but, love you. Uh, you, you, you know, it's a, it's a sad thing that you would put that ahead of God. What would happen <laughs> if it was the Super Bowl yeah. and Jesus would come and the game ain't over? Would you be angry at Jesus? No, don't take me now. I want to see who's going to win. Nothing against the Super Bowl. I like the Super Bowl. I love all that. I'm, I'm trying to make a point here. You see, I just don't put keep it. Keep things in perspective. You have you to know, keep things in, perfect, in perspective. Now, well, you what, know, the thing what is, about those Christians guys yeah. that played on Sunday? You know, uh, the Christian quarterbacks of the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. Well, you know, there's a lot of times God said, if you don't work, you don't eat. That to us, they're playing. To them, that's work. 
Right. That's it is their job. Them. But you know, Jesus also said, don't esteem one day above the other. You can get right. religious in things. Right. And I don't think that's what you're really talking about. No, no, no. But it's all about putting God first. And there, there are times when God wants us to enjoy life and there are exceptions to things, but you have, you have to, you know in your heart sure. whether God is first or something else is first. Okay. This is what he's getting at. I, I'm going to tell you this. This is one of my personal convictions. Now this, it won't probably wouldn't affect you at all. I love movies. I, I do enjoy watching movies and things of that nature, but when I'm preaching a meeting, okay, and, or a series of services or whatever, and sometimes I'll have a break in between, you know, you know, Maybe I'll only do a morning sermon. I don't have to be there at night. I, I could go see an afternoon matinee, but I don't do that. Why? Because that day belongs to the Lord. Now, that's just me. I'm not saying if you and, went, and that's, that's wrong, because that's not wrong. And it's not necessarily a Sunday, but no matter yes, what not day that is. It's not necessarily what it is. Because you you've dedicated right. your, t- but, your, your mind But and there your is focus. a day of the Lord, Kathy. Yeah. He said, don't esteem one day above another. And that's true. But you got to, you know, I figure out a, a hundred, and, is it 160 hours in a week? I think it is. You know, I don't know. If you're a Catholic, 28 minutes, mass. If you're a Baptist, 60 minutes, an hour. If you're a Pentecostal, you're going to get two hours or better, you know, depending on what it is, you know. And I'm not, I'm not being critical of that. But I'm saying that's not, not a lot in the whole week. And God expects you to work. So you, sometimes you work. You can't go quote the church. Now, church is in your heart. Don't misunderstand me. I understand that. And God you know, in God's heart. in your heart. That, that's part of it. But I mean, when you have an opportunity of a choice, sometimes you don't have a choice. You got to work. You got to do something. Okay, I understand that. And uh, so I think the quarterbacks, and I believe, I believe they're Christians, you know, the ones that just, but uh, they, they just won the, I think the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Mahomes, I believe he's a Christian. I believe uh, Purdy is his name, Purdy. <laughs> oh, but, so, but that's, they, they had to do a job there. See, that's a job. You know, that's what they get paid for, to do that. See, so that, that I'm not talking that. But I'm talking when you have an opportunity, uh, you should never put anything first. Not long ago. Above God, you mean. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, uh, above God, yeah. You don't put, he's first. That, that has to be foremost in your life. For, if, for example, God will bless you. Sometimes he, 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 he don't want you, let's say if it's money and you want something, he, you think, well, I'm going to give it to him. Oh, yeah, that's con- you can do that, but he may not be requiring you to do that, and that's an honorable thing that you did do it. Right. But, you know, a person asked me the other day, and now, now some people are going to disagree with what I'm about to say, what's the difference between tithing and a seed? Well, tithing is with the seed of Abraham. I consider that mandatory. Seed giving, that's voluntary. You know, you give as the Lord directs you and guides you. You know, <laughs> giving it shall be given unto you. See, you're saying that kind of stuff. Now, the reason why I tithe, some people say that's not for today, it's under the law. No, it's not under the law. And, 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 but my point is this, you're not, this, you're not the seed of Moses. When he wrote the law, your name wasn't on the tablets. You're the seed of Abraham. And if you want it in the New Testament, you can go to Hebrews 7. And Jesus is the uh, uh, priest on a, uh, uh, Melchizedek on the order of Melchizedek. And what did Abraham do? He gave tithe to uh, Melchizedek. So Jesus is our Melchizedek. We do the same. Now, to me, that's mandatory, to me. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to go to hell if I didn't. I'm not judging anybody about any of that. But to me, that's putting God first. And if you go back to Malachi, will a man rob God? So God thought it robbery. Not that he needed it. It was because of the when, heart when of a person. Tie. And he was talking to the preachers the there in Malachi, to the priests and different things of that nature. So, uh, you know, it's amazing to me. I just will not. And I refuse to um, put something else ahead of God. Have you ever done it before? Yeah. And I repented over it. Yeah. I knew I wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? I said, Lord, forgive me. And he does. That's not the issue. Right. But you see, so have you ever thought about backsliding? No. One time when I first got saved, one time, I never thought that Satan could get to me. I didn't know nothing about the word of God. And somebody slapped me and I got real angry. And I thought, son... God, you let that happen to me. I, that's it. That's it. I'm getting out of here. I'm going back, and, I, and I'm heading to a bar I used to like called Don and Curly's. But I had a praying wife. She began to pray. And to make a long story short, man, it's, I guess you sent an angel over there. I couldn't open up the I door to call when I got there. I was bleeding the blood I did everything I could to open that door. House. I mean, I was beating up my shoulder. And then all of a sudden, I, I, I come to myself. And I remember... 
praying and pleading, praying, you praying in tongues. And I remember the Lord, I felt I was led by the Spirit in my, you know, you can be led by the Spirit in, in your prayer life. It's so powerful. And I was led to pray and figuratively, I'll say, I plead the blood of Jesus over every door in my house. And I physically walked around my little tiny, not even thousand square foot house, put my, uh, figuratively like I was putting the blood over the doorpost the way Moses did when that death angel came by, putting over every door, every window, and I was doing this. And then you were here in a car, in the car, in front of that ballroom, in that car, and that door wouldn't open. When and I know that was, me. I didn't realize I was pleading the blood of Jesus over everything, and every I door my that I up. owned. I was literally and it wouldn't open. Like this. And finally I came to myself and I repented. I said, God, forgive me. I mean, my Lord, I mean, if I can't take a hit, I mean, I ain't much of a Christian. Forgive me for doing that. Watch this. And I had my hand on that door, boom, the door opened. I believe there was an angel holding that door. And I went back home and Kathy was so glad that I, because uh, I, was, I was really angry. I remember you left angry and I was praying and then when you came back, you act like nothing happened. You came back, I think you went to the grocery store. Yeah, you came I did. Back I mean, a bag I, of groceries. I mean, now why did like I, nothing happened. Now why did I do that? Why? My love was not perfected. That's true. I had to have time, as I told you last week, for time to perfect that. Now today, that's we're, a whole nother ball growing. game. We're all growing. Yeah, you were you see, growing. I, I, you, had to, you have to grow. See, and, and I, I, I didn't know any of the scriptures, so I couldn't go to the Bible myself and try to find something. I was trying to, but I, you know, I didn't know where anything was and was things just, of that nature. Right. You know, when you're saying that, I just thought about Peter, how, you know, he betrayed Christ. Yeah. The same Jesus, thing, he did the same thing Judas did. He did. And he said, uh, Jesus had forewarned him. He says, he says, Satan has desired to sift you, but I have prayed for yeah. you. And yeah. when you are converted, uh, he says, I want you to reach out to your brother. Right. I forget the last part of that verse, but he saw, foresaw that and Jesus and Peter had said, oh, I would never, never forsake yeah. you. Well, he said but the he, same thing about that, 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 that dream. I have never eaten anything that's commonly. <laughs> Peter He's had one of them never, never No, people. no, no. Peter had a foot and mouth disease. He's <laughs> yeah. always putting his foot in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. He did it often. Shows us that sure. God forgave him. Do. He can forgive <sighs> us. But Peter uh, did hear himself deny Christ three times. Uh, three times before that cock crowed, yeah. before the rooster crowed, right. and so at some point, the one one tramp Bible, uh, one of the gospels talks about how Peter looked at Jesus, said that heard, he heard, they looked eye to eye when they saw him, when he recognized that he had done that. That's why he was so sorrowful and he was he so repented. upset with here's, himself. Here's the difference between Peter and Judas. Yeah, both of them D the, sinned. They betrayed Christ. Betrayed Christ. Now here's the difference between them. Peter asked, knew God could forgive him. Judas knew Jesus could forgive him. Or let me say, Peter knew Jesus could forgive him. The difference between Peter and Judas, Judas could not forgive himself. He listened to an outlaw spirit. And the Bible said Satan entered him. Peter not only knew Jesus could forgive him, but he forgave himself. Because Peter understood that he was made in the express image of yeah, God. Yeah. Judas didn't. You see right. the difference right there? Yeah. And that, that'll help you to understand. I love that. See, so perfect love casts out all fear. Oh. I, I, and before you say, I want to pray for people. I feel right now that some people, they got this fear thing, and, and we want to we want to inject you, give you a shot of love. Can mm. we do that? Father, in Jesus' name, I, I speak to everyone watching this boardroom chat. You wanted to do a part two on it yes, and gave so. us a title, Lord, that, that love is the antidote to fear. I rebuke fear. I commanded the cease and desist from its work in people's lives. What fear of what it, spiritual, physical, financial, whatever it might be. Well, you said if two of us agree, well, Kathy's one and I'm two, and the people that are hearing us, who knows how many are hearing us? I ask this to happen today. Today. Yes, Lord. Lord, and let that love of God, that peace of God, let that love be perfected that fear will no longer have a place in someone's spirit, soul, or body in any way, shape, or love form because God is love. Amen. And I thank you for hearing my prayer today. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that with me, I know you felt like a lift. I felt that in my spirit, like, a, oh, yeah, you know why The fear is gone. Now, keep your body so full of perfected love, your soul so full of perfected love, your spirit's so full of perfected love that now when fear comes, it can't fit. Mm. It, it, can't, it, it can't fit. Stay, the Bible said he make the bones fat. I stay fat in the Word of God. Hallelujah. And then nothing else will be able to fit. 
You see what I'm saying? And you'll walk your life, and then you'll never think about backsliding. I didn't mean to cut you off, but go ahead. We oh, only no, got a couple of minutes. That's good. But this is the, the flip side of this. You know how before Jesus was crucified, he denied Christ three times. But after Jesus was resurrected, he revealed himself to the Talking disciples again. Did I say Peter? Yeah, no, you said Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for helping uh, me with I that. I got to help a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when Peter, Jesus when did not Jesus, deny God. <laughs> right, right, when uh, Peter denied uh, Christ, that Christ three times before right. before he was crucified, then after Jesus was resurrected, Jesus came to his disciples, and I love it in John chapter twenty-one when when Jesus asked Peter the question three different times again, basically reminding him, mm -hmm. and so he says, uh, and he. Fed, gave him some fish or something, they were at a lake. He says, that's what he had also multiplied okay. the fish. Uh, it's a beautiful story in John chapter 21, verse 15 says, this is the New Living Translation. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, I know I, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Jesus said the third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And then Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Then feed my sheep. So this was three times that he denied him before the yeah. the crucifixion. He printed all three times right then there. Then three times he brought it all back. <laughs> but Jesus was reaching out to him and realized, and Peter said, you know, I thought I loved you before then, but then he knew. So we have to all come to a spot where we know God's love in a deeper way. And Amen. it's a growing process. So Amen. don't get discouraged if you don't feel like really comprehend it. It takes, Peter was with Jesus three years and didn't quite get it. But don't give time. up on it. Just keep time. searching God, yeah. seeking, realize that he always loved well, you. We no said matter, that in part he one, doesn't time love you love. because of what, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're always working and growing, but he loves us because we belong to Him. Amen. Just same way that when a baby is born, you love it because it's yours. We we belong to God, and He loves us, and so He's always wanting to help us Amen. to live a live for Him and experience the beautiful love that He has for so us. So let me say this today: that the love of God in you is the antidote to fear. So That's never good. allow it to come into your life. That's right. In any way, shape, or form, it'll cast it out. You have many opportunities to fail. Just don't take any. That's the love of God. Remember, God is light. God is love. And God is spirit. Mm -hmm. And all three facets of God is focused on you. And mm -hmm. if you focus on that priority, you eliminate all this confusion that's in the world. I thank you for watching us today. I want to thank our faithful financial partners for helping us to do this. Man, we couldn't do it. I mean, I, I look at this beautiful table. and, and The partners bought this table, the camera. They bought it. I mean, my Lord, y'all bought it. 100%. Mm -hmm. And we use 100% of what you give it goes to world evangelism. Thank you, partners, for being so courteous and kind. If you'd like to sow a seed today, you can go to jdm.org and hit the donate button if you like, or you can use PayPal if you want. Or you can text to give a one-time donation or a recurring one. And now Kathy likes this. She likes the JDM apps where you can select the giving you like, or you can just mail in an old-fashioned donation, a check or something like that. 100% of it goes in the world evangelist. Let me say this too. Kathy's Glorious Woman Conference is next week. That's Friday, March the 8th at 7 p.m. Saturday, March the 9th at 9 a.m. Registration, and this is when I say this, registration and admission are free. Where is it at? At JDM International Headquarters. Destrahan is a suburb of New Orleans, Louisiana. You want to know more information? Go to jdm.org and you will be blessed. And I'm telling you, it's one of the most phenomenal meetings we do every year here. It's called the Glorious Conference because really what it is, it is glorious. Yes, it is. And it's a blessing. And so it's... until next okay. week, this is Jesse and Kathy saying we love you. Thank you for watching more The Boardroom Chats. And remember, love is the antidote to fear. That's Have right. a great day today. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.